So what I'd like to do in this 15 minute fundamental session is talk about business partners. Now before we get started, the other 15 minute fundamental sessions that you might have been watching, you might look at this one and say, hang on, this looks a little bit different. The user interface in SAP Business One looks different. Well, that's because right now what I'm doing with this session is I'm recording it using SAP Business One version for HANA. So the cockpit looks different. This is the Fiori style cockpit. So again, if your uh, cockpit that you're using in your Business One system doesn't look like this, then there's a chance, a very strong chance that you're not using using SAP Business One version for HANA. But a lot of these fundamentals are, uh, are consistent across both versions, both the SQL Server version and the HANA version. So just wanted to mix things up a little bit. So let's then dive in and we'll take a look at business partners. So business partners are critical inside SAP Business One because fundamentally, all the transactions, your accounts payable and accounts receivable transactions and all the work you do with um, you know, the, the CRM when you're working on sales opportunities and so on and so forth, they all work through uh, utilizing these business partners. So if you think about it, a business partner is either a customer um, or a supplier, or you might know them as vendors, or it can be a lead. Now the great thing about SAP Business One is it makes it very, very easy for you to work with all three of these different kinds of business partners. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna go into um, the business partner option here and then I'm gonna open up the business partner master data. And so you'll see that brings up our business partner master data screen. Now notice, and I've mentioned this before in one of our other sessions, whenever you open master data, it always opens up in find mode because it assumes that you're gonna go and look for um, a particular record, all right? So that's why the screen has these yellow options here on the fields, and you'll see that the action button down here is the find button. So I can toggle into the add button, so I wanna add a new business partner just by going control A, and you'll see that now takes me into add mode and my action button now says add. But let's go back into find mode and I can use control F. Oh, by the way, up here on the toolbar, you've also got these options here. You click on the binoculars here and that changes it into find mode. You click on the little plus page here and that clicks you back into add mode. So let's go into find mode. Now, important point to note, when you're doing a lookup, if you know, let's say the first um, two or three characters or whatever of a field, you can type those in and do the lookup. If you don't know that, you can go and do a wildcard. So for example, if I just put an asterisk, which is the wildcard search and press enter, what it does is it pops up a list of my business partners. So let's go and call up one of those business partners for the sake of the exercise. So this is MaxiTech. Now you'll see that in the business partner master data, that all of these screens are consistent regardless of whether the business partner is a customer, a vendor, or a lead. So if you know how to create a customer, basically you now know how to create a vendor because it's exactly the same screen. So that keeps things nice and simple. The main difference that you'll see when you're first creating a record is your choice here in this drop-down list you specify. Is it a customer, a vendor, or a lead? So you'll see right now MaxiTech is a customer, but if I went back into my find mode, all right, and I go across here and I say vendor, and then I come in here and I put in an asterisk and do my lookup, you'll see what happens is my lookup now only shows me the vendors. All right, so you can really narrow this down very, very quickly and easily. Now, if I only want to see the leads, then I simply change that to a lead. I've got my asterisk there. I hit enter, and now I just see my leads. Now, an important point to note when you're working with some of these lookups, if you, um, let's say, you want to go back to this list without having to redo the search, you can choose this option here of keep visible. So what this will do is when you choose the record, it brings it up here in your business partner master data, but it leaves the lookup window open. If you have that unticked, then this lookup window will disappear. But so here is our lead, and you can see the information in here is fairly consistent. Now, what is going to change as you're looking at the different um, kinds of records. For example, you'll see against a lead, we can only have sales orders or opportunities. 
but if I'm going in and I'm going to go and look at a customer, so again I'll go to my control F, I'll choose customers, I'll go and do a lookup. Now I've now got a new lookup window. Now remember, why have I still got this other one here? Because I've told it to keep visible. So I can click here and close that down. Now I've got my customers. Let's go and grab Earthshaker Corporation. And you'll see now, when I'm looking at a customer, I now get to see the account balance, deliveries, orders, and opportunities. All right, now that's important to remember because if it's a lead, you can't actually create accounting transactions against a lead. You can create um, quotes and orders, and, can you, and you can also create opportunities. But of course, before you can turn those into accounting documents like, um, like deliveries or invoices and so on, then you've got to turn that lead into a customer. And Business One makes that whole process very, very easy. Let's now take a look. We'll go back into our find mode, control F. And again, we're going to take a look at a vendor. Once again, we can use our lookup. And there we have it. Let's pick uh, Lasercom. So here's my vendor, which is Lasercom. And now you'll see when I'm looking at a vendor, of course, I get to see the account balance. I get to see the value of goods receipt purchase orders. All right, and the value of purchase orders. So these are purchase orders that have been raised, and these are the goods receipts that are currently being processed against those purchase orders. Make sense? So the other things that are going to be different as you look at each one of these different kinds of records is some of the information that you see across here in the tabs. So for example, if you go in here into the accounting tab, you'll see when I'm looking at a vendor, in my control account, you'll see it says accounts payable. Well, of course, if I've got a, a customer open in my control accounts, it's going to show accounts receivable. But let's go again and do a look up, and this time I'm going to find a lead. What do you think we're going to see when we go and look at a lead? Well, let's go and find out. Let's pick a lead. We've got Andreas Ackerman. All right, so when I'm looking at the accounting information here, all right, because it's a lead and that is real, going to be able to be turned into a customer, you've got the accounts receivable information that's available for you there. All right, so when you're working through the business partner master data, it becomes very, very easy um, to, you know, to, to, to create these records uh, and really start to build a good picture of what's going on with that particular business partner. Now, a couple of points to remember. Remember that all of these business partners are all sitting inside the same table inside SAP Business One. So if I go in here and I go back to my first data record, even though that was a lead, you'll see my first data record based on this code is actually a customer. And if I go to the last record, you'll see that's a vendor. So it makes it very, very easy when you're working with these records to be able to um, do that master data maintenance. So let's go back. We're looking at our customer, and in this case, we're looking at MaxiTech. So you'll see when I look at my general tab, this is where you've got the, the traditional information, name, rank, and serial number. You know, what's their telephone number? What's the mobile phone number? And so on. A, a lot of these fields are very self-explanatory. Um, you can go ahead, though, and, and you can start putting in additional information, and all this is user-definable. You can specify what's the industry. And also, if they're a business partner, you can also specify what business partner type. All right, so this becomes more important when you're starting to work with, um, you know, the the processing of expenses and other different kinds of transactions inside SAP Business One, and we'll see that um, a little bit further down the path when uh, this business partner type information becomes important. The other thing you can do, of course, uh, is you can nominate who is the owner of this record. So who is the person inside your organization? that owns this customer relationship. So you can get a list of those employees that that, um, that can be potentially the owner of this record. So if you wanna find out uh, what's going on with a customer or, or who is the relationship manager, then you can go and you can look at that owner information. Then of course, you can also record who is the sales employee that is responsible for that customer. So you can have those multiple hierarchies there. You can also come in here and you can specify who's the technician that's assigned to that customer if you're using Business One service. And then also for you doing your sales 
sales analysis, you can specify what territory does that customer belong to. Then you've got the rest of this information like the contact people. Who are the contacts that you have with that customer or vendor or lead? And you, as you can see here, you can have as many of those as you want. And this is a one-to-many relationship. When you're starting to drill down and look at these, you can see there's additional information. So this is the kind of information that's then available to to be used within the marketing campaign functionality in SAP Business One. We'll look at that in another one of our sessions, but you can see here that you've got the capability to say, look, when I'm communicating with this particular contact, I don't want to send marketing content. So I can block that. And then you can also flag these people as active or inactive. So lots of different ways that you can, um, that you can work with that data to make it available for different processes in SAP Business One. Same scenario occurs here with the addresses. Now you have two kinds of addresses. You have billing addresses and then you have shipping addresses. But you can have multiple billing addresses and multiple shipping addresses. And then you've got the ability to specify those at the time of uh, creating the sales order, for example, in the case of a customer or um, in the purchase order in the case of a vendor. All right, so very, very easy to, to create that information and keep that up to date. Then you've got your payment terms information. And with SAP Business One, as you know, all of this is customizable. So this is just basically where you're specifying a lot of that additional information, as well as what is the bank account. Okay, so when you're working with this particular customer, what is the business partner's bank account that they use? This is quite important as well when you're working with a vendor because if you're generating payment files and sending those to the bank, then obviously it needs to pick up what is the vendor's bank account. So the money goes, of course, into the right bank account. Your credit card details are here. And then right now you can see that the credit card number is, is, is shown, but that can be masked and there are a number of different solutions that enable you to um, do what's called tokenizing. So it never, the business one never actually stores a credit card number it stores what's called an encrypted token which then gets looked up by the payment provider so you've got that kind of capability there as well so if you're looking at that and thinking mm, gee should that really be shown there you can switch that off then you've got the ability to specify you know how do I pay this particular um, vendor or how do I receive payments from this customer because remember, there is a payments engine with SAP Business One that allows you to process outbound payments as well as create inbound payment files. So that's the information that you can see in here. Now I'm not gonna go through every single one of these step by step because then this 15, funda 15 minute fundamental uh, would become uh, you know, a 15 hour fundamental because there's a lot of capability behind, uh, behind these screens. Um, so again, remember that the help file is your friend and the help file does give you the ability to drill down and see field by field exactly what each one of these fields does. And you can get to your help up here on the main screen simply by clicking on help. And when you're on that help, you can go into the documentation. You can see you've got your online help or if you press F1, you get context help. So the online help is kind of like an online manual. Whereas the context help will bring up help that is specific to this screen. So always a good point to remember that. Then you've got, as we talked about before, your accounting information. If you're using parent-child uh, business partners, so a parent-child uh, relationship there, you might um, sell to multiple branches of this customer and you wanna track the sales for each one, but then you want the outstanding debt to be consolidated up to a central account. That's what this gives you the ability to do. You've got the ability to specify your control accounts, where do these uh, accounts, or where the transactions for this business partner post to in the GL, in the balance sheet. Also got the ability to manage whether or not you send out dunning or collection letters. And also what is the process that happens there? Do you charge interest and so on and so forth? A couple of other things that are important is also the tax information. And this will vary according to the localization. So right now I'm just in a company that just so happens to be using the Australian localization. But then if you're using the US localization, obviously you get your US tax jurisdictions that come up here. You've got your properties and these are completely user definable where you can specify what are each one of these different properties and you can use those for all kinds of things. Maybe specifying if they're in a buying group or different characteristics of this particular kind of business partner. Your remarks which are like comment fields 
And then of course, you've got your attachments. Now, remember in business one, you can create these attachments, which are basically files which can contain almost any kind of data, and then you can attach those to the business partner. So for example, if this is a customer, you might have a customer agreement. You might have um, a credit application. You might have you know any of those kinds of documents. You can attach all of those documents to the business partner master record in SAP business one, uh, and then you've got a central repository where all that information is stored. One last button I'm going to bring your attention to is um, down here. When you're looking at a business partner, let's just go back to our general tab. You'll see here you've got this button which says you can also, and what this does, this will give you the ability to look at all the related uh, information that is related to this particular customer. So I might want to see all the service contracts for a customer or sales blanket agreements or activities. But then I can also go ahead and create activities, create service calls, create sales orders and so on. Um, and then this is where you've got some of that additional functionality which is specific to SAP Business One version for HANA, like the customer 360 degree view, uh, which we will talk about in another session uh, a little further down the track. Right, so you've got that functionality, that capability there. Last thing, of course, when you're looking at this information up the top, um, you've got the ability to drill down. So if you're looking at the account balance for this customer, you're saying $56,000. Well, what's that made up of? One click on the little golden arrow there, and it'll drill down, and it'll show you all of the account balance information. And then, of course, if you want to view that in a graphed version, if you want to view that in a graph version, then you can simply click on the little graph icon and you'll see Business One will go ahead, take that information and generate it for you into a graph. Now, the standard graphs that come up in SAP Business One here aren't that glamorous looking. They've been in the product for a long, long time. Um, so if you want to get uh, nicer looking graphs, that's where things like Power BI, things like the analytics capability in SAP Business One are going to give you a much nicer uh, look and feel. But these are fairly straightforward and, and nice ways of getting some very, very quick information. So you can see you can see it in a bar graph or a line graph, for example, uh, and then you get that information mapped out for you very, very quickly. And there's all the transactions which make up that sales analysis. So you've got that capability to be able to drill down. And then, of course, you can just simply click here on the little back arrow and that'll bring you back into your business partner master data. So there you have it, business partner master data, very, very important. Usually one of the first things that you set up when you're setting up your SAP Business One system. And remember the key points with business partner master data, one screen that you use to set up vendors, customers, and your leads, makes it very, very easy. Uh, and makes it very, very simple to learn how to work with SAP Business One.